Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to say, call halal, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of the great millstone who teach you well. Shalom to the Akim and Akwath out there who are listening and taking heed to this gospel, to this glory, glorious news that we are now partakers of. And uh, you know, hopeful elect of. Because all we can do is hope and pray, you know? Nonetheless, Shalom, this is your brother Debakia coming to you live from Denver, Colorado. Out here to give you the truth. All through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kadash. Um, I want to get into a lesson regarding uh, the remnant and uh, what's happening to us right now as we live amongst and during these last days. You know, I want to get the scriptures, uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little there a little, and hopefully you're edified by this video. Let's get into it. All right, we are, we are going to go to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, and we're going to start at the first verse, but the point is in pain. Okay, let's do it. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Verse 2. In the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And that's right, because when you're in this truth, you know, you're you're stuck in an open field because you're being exposed to a lot of things at once. Because that's how the uh, Holy Spirit, the Rakatadash, operates. And nonetheless, the Most High set up men who were in this truth before us, and that's our elders and our apostles of Great Millstone. Speaking of which, Elder Apostle Tahar is roughly 30, 32 years in. Our Elder Apostle Tabar is roughly 30 years in. And I believe Elder Apostle Ramlab is approaching his 30 years of being in the truth. And they've taught us sound doctrine on how to operate ourselves, how to conduct ourselves. Nonetheless, they've given the men all across the four corners of the earth the correct breakdowns when it comes to this Bible. Continuing on. Verse 3. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. You have to endure all things because being in this walk is not the easiest. You know, it comes with the bitter and the sweet. Roughly paraphrasing, uh, in the book of Ezekiel, he mentions that. And I believe uh, John the Revelator also mentions that in the book of Revelation. Because when you first wake up, you know, you're amazed at everything. You learn about your heritage, you just have this top-notch zeal. But with this truth also comes the bitter truth. You have to accept that two-thirds of our people will be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. You have to accept that your family won't understand this. Your uh, spouse may not understand this. Your children won't understand this. And for damn sure, the co-workers won't understand this truth. But you have to keep enduring for that prize at the very end. Continuing on, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Let's get that. Let's break this down. No man that warreth, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. And what are the affairs of this life? The affairs of this life include partying, for the most part, folly, wickedness, uh, witchcraft. You know, who's woke and who's not? Thought activity, hoe activities, etc. You know, all this madness going on in the world with you know, our current condition, but it's all through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahashai nonetheless. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. No man at war is in 
entangling himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So, if you woke up to this truth, it's because Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai chose you to wake up to this truth. And there's a good chance that you're of the hopeful elect as long as you continue to do the right things, you know? Because we don't know who the elect is. That's why we strive so hard to please the Most High. And you have to fear Him. You know, fear is the beginning of wisdom. So that's why we always say, call Halal Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kadash, which means all praises to God in the name of His Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus in the name of the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 again. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for mastery, master, mastery, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. Verse 6. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord Yahweh give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Second Timothy two and nine. Wherefore, or excuse me, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of Yahweh is not bound. 2 Timothy 2, chapter 2 and 10. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Hamashiach and Hawashai with eternal glory. So, if you're in this truth, you have to keep enduring, you know? Because you never know who you may wake up. You never know who you may encounter or come across. Nonetheless, the Most High wants you to continue to endure to earn that prize. Because, you know, the elect were all fighting to be the top uh, noble man in the eyes of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. And he, he, uh, he uh, enjoys those who offer up those uh, sweet sacrifices. For example, fasting, uh, praying, going to camp, doing your videos. Taking heed to the elders, listening to the Holy Spirit, and, you know, to you make that a routine, and eventually you'll just become comfortable with your uh, awakening process, and the Most High will keep strengthening you. Second Timothy chapter two and verse eleven. It is a faithful saying: For if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. That's right, so if you're truly in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, this world, these uh, activities that these Babylonians who are your modern day Americans participate in will not in no way, shape, or form uh, interest you. You're, you're supposed to be separate while you're in this truth. Verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the, the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. And we're going to wrap it up right here at uh, verse 16. Of these things, that's a lot. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness. So, you know, as long as you have the opportunity, try to talk about the Lord and meditate on his laws that Jesus commandments keep continue to meditate on the kingdom and Esau Edom all of our enemies these heathen nations going down keep your mind on heavenly things all right continuing on 
We're going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 40, and verse 3. Okay, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 40, and verse 3. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord, Yahweh. So that's what you're seeing right now. You're, you're seeing this new song being preached on all four corners of the earth by the men of the Lord who are his prophets. And mostly at GMS here at Great Millstone. I truthfully believe the elders and apostles of Great Millstone have 100% truth. Mostly because they can back up everything that they say. As we just read in 2 Timothy, they study to show themselves approved, and then they feed the flock. So that's what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to feed the flock. Nonetheless, this new song in our mouth is this, this gospel that we are coming with. This, this great news that we are telling the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans about the things to come. And this new song is Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. That is the new song, calling on the true name. Because you got camps out there that say that you don't have to call on the true name. That is complete blasphemy. 40 and 3 again. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise into our power. Many shall see it. This is what's happening right now. Yep, this is also what's happening. In fear, and shall trust in the Lord Yahweh. Verse 4. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Verse 5. Many, O Lord, Yahweh, my power, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to, to us, Lord, and they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And that is happening. That is what's happening right now. We were in a very, very amazing time, like I had mentioned at the beginning, because the, the elect are waking up on all four corners of the earth. And, you know... It's a lot. It's a it's a mass awakening right now. It's a lot of people. So Esau Edom is scared, and they're scrambling like roaches when you turn on the kitchen light uh, after coming home from work at 8:30 p.m. <laughs> Inside joke. Okay. Now we're going to go to um, the book of First Corinthians, chapter four and verse nine. Just want to get a point with the Apostle Paul. Had mentioned, and he was speaking to the Corinthians who lived in Corinth at the time, who were Gentiles, which are Israelites who are not aware of them being Israel. That's what the New Testament Gentile is about, and that's one of the mysteries that these wacky tacky Christians will never ever understand. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter four, in verse. Uh, let's start at one. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Hamashiach and stewards of the mysteries of Yahweh. And what's one of the mysteries? The mis the mis one mystery is uh, es who, who the so-called white man is, which his name, his biblical nationality is Esau Who the uh, so-called Arabs are, their biblical nationality is, is Ishmael, the Ishmaelites. Who the so-called Chinese people are, they are Moabites from the tribe of Moab. Who the so-called Japanese are. They're Ammonites from the tribe of Ammon. Who the so-called Africans are. They are Hamites from the sea and tribe of Ham. You know, to, to have this understanding of who nationalities are according to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is a mystery. Not everyone is going to understand this mystery. And you just have to accept that. Verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man may be found faithful. And what's faith? Faith, faith is an important thing. It's, it's mentioned in a, I believe in a book of Hebrews. It says, "Without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh." And you know, correct me if I'm wrong on the comment board. Nonetheless, faith is a big thing, and to to really be in this truth, you have to have faith that. We have a power. You have to have faith that we have chariots and in, in the heavens. You have to have faith that Yahweh Shah is going to 
you know, fix these corruptible bodies and take away our flesh and, you know, save his elect and then afterwards save two thirds in the kingdom. That all comes through faith. First Corinthians four and three. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of a man's judgment. Yeah, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time unto the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man praise of Yahweh. 1 Corinthians 4 and 6. In these things, brethren, I have in figure transferred to myself and to the Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you should that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. To be in his truth, you have to continue to be um continue to be humble and uh, lowly, because that's who the most high is dealing with. He loves a humble and a lowly man and or woman. First Corinthians chapter four, and verse seven. Who maketh thee to defer from another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why doest thou glory as if it had not received it? First Corinthians four and eight. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. You have reigned as kings without us. And I would to Yahweh ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. This is a really, really nice precept. One of my favorite precepts of all time. 1 Corinthians 4 and 9. For I think that Yahweh has set forth us, the apostles, last, as it was appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to the angels, and to men. So, right there where it says that, for I think that Yahweh has set forth us, the apostles, last. That's why all the men in GMS give double honors to our elders and apostles a great millstone because they are literally, you know, some of the last prophets we have on earth, mostly because they've been in the truth for, like I said, plus 30 years, and they uh, labor day in and day night, every uh, every weekend on the highways and byways, teaching this word to Israel and to the, to the hopeful elect. And we're following in their footsteps and their examples. As it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world. Let's get that word spectacle. S P E C T A C. <coughs> okay, this is the word spectacle in the online. On the online uh, etymology online Bible, spectacle is a noun, something or someone seen, especially a notable or unusual sight. Con, and that's what you know these uh, Edomites are seeing right now on all four corners of the earth are men in garments with beards on their faces, you know, teaching the word of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai and boldness and standing upon our feet. And coming with this gospel and telling them their, their future and, and the judgment that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is about to bring and telling them that they're going into slavery and all these harsh atrocities are going to happen to them because you know in the book of Revelation it says give give unto her double so we're gonna do two times worse than what these Edomites did to us in slavery and we're telling them this in their in their face and they're looking at us all crazy and that's why we it says we are a spectacle because it's something or someone seen, especially a notable or unusual sight. Let's keep going. Spectacle. An elaborate and remarkable display on a lavish scale. It is a remarkable thing for us to be out there on the highways and byways teaching this word, you know? Spectacle again. A blunder that makes you look ridiculous. Used in a phrase, make a spectacle of yourself. 
we're back at the, we're back at the book of First Corinthians chapter four and verse nine. For I think that Yahweh has set us forth the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Verse ten. We are fools for Hamashiach's sake, but we are wise in Hamashiach. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. First Corinthians chapter four and verse eleven. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor without salak, and labor working with our own hands. Being revolved, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. You will be persecuted for standing in the name of Yahweh Yahushai. As you get deeper into this truth, more demons try to come among amongst you. Among them. And demons come in <clears throat> any uh, uh, shape, form, or fashion. They can hop on people, your animals, co-workers, your girlfriend, your husband, anybody. And mostly you're going to be persecuted by Esau Edom for standing for your heritage. They want us to you know, be out here saying we're black, we're black, black this, black that. No, to be black is to be void of light. Courtesy of uh, Elder Yashawamba, the great leader, the great elder out there in Dallas, Texas. Shalom. The book of 1 Corinthians 4 and 13. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things until this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. So if you decide to get deeper into this truth, just know that more evilness will come to you and try to approach you. And you have to continue to pray in the name of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shad, to have strength to endure as a hard soldier. Okay, so let me see. We're going to go to the book of... Uh, Okay, we're done. Uh, yeah, we're good on First Corinthians four and uh, First Corinthians chapter four. So, with that being said, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this lesson. But I wanted to, you know, encourage those out there who may be young in this truth and who may be old in this truth to keep on going and know that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has your back and He's watching you and His angels are always around us. You got chariot sightings at a mass number right now. Esau Edom is afraid because they're sent as a curse unto his nation. You know, all these faith boosters, we just got to continue to endure. So with that being said, I'm going to say, call hello, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Baka, Ha, Kadash, Baraka the Yahweh, Baraka the Yahweh Shai, Baraka the Yahweh, Baraka the Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Baka, Ha, Kadash, Shalom. Please uh, like, listen, and subscribe to my YouTube. Uh, you guys have a you know, great day out there, wherever you may be. Uh, and a bod, ba ball, a bod, ba ball, a bod, ba ball. Shalom.